Hey everyone, Warwick's here. So Blizzard dropped a bunch of new hero talent trees, trying to mine that content as we're in a good bit of a content drought for the game right now, as we wait for patch 10.2.6 to release on March 19th. And so in the meantime, we've got a lot of trees to talk about here. So we've already done a video uh, that released Friday, which is the day that I record this. So I released that the same night I started recording these. This is out on Saturday. Um, this is Conduit of the Celestials. We're going to be looking at a, f a couple of more here. Uh, we've also got, I'll be doing a video on Pack Leader because uh, Survival Hunter, and I'm a big Survival Hunter fan. Uh, and then we're also going to be looking at Druid of the Claw, which is Feral and Guardian Druid. Those of you guys know, I've, I've loved Druid for a while, so we'll be taking a look at both of those. But today, uh, and I've already done my video on Shadow Pan, so go check that out if you're curious to see what it looks like from a Brewmaster and Windwalker point of view. I play all three specs pretty extensively, so I'm looking at this kind of holistically, not necessarily from a one spec perspective. I know that there are creators in the bug community. I know Equinox has already put out a video on from the Brewmaster point of view. I'm sure Megaset, if she hasn't already by the time this releases, will be doing videos on the Mistweaver one, kind of the Celestials here, from a more pure Mistweaver point of view. Uh, so it'll be exciting to check those out if you want to look at like one spec things. I'm looking at this kind of as a generalist that plays all three specs itself. So we're going to dive into Conduit of the Celestials. This is for Mistreaver and Windwalker Monks. So we're still waiting on the Brewmaster and the Windwalker tree, hopefully in the next batch of talent trees that go out, which either will be ideally next week or shortly thereafter. Uh, we'll get to see the last one of that. Now, uh, to kind of give you an idea of what this video is like, I haven't looked at any of these. These were released while I was at work today. So I got home, uh, took a quick nap because I was exhausted from my day. Um, and now I'm here making these videos. So this is the first time I'm really digging into these trees. So this is a true kind of first impression. Um, as I continue to think about them, as I continue to get more information on these, I'll probably come back and do follow-up videos on the Monk and Druid ones, because those are the two classes that I'm expecting to play the most in the world within, uh, at least as of now. So we're gonna take a look at it and see. All right, so Celestial Conduit. Let's start at the top of the tree, and then we're gonna go left side, middle, right side, and then look at the end capstone. Some cool logos here. Celestial Conduit, the August Celestials empower you, causing you to radiate nature damage onto enemies and healing on up to five injured allies within 20 yards over four seconds, split evenly among them. It's a one and a half minute cooldown. So this sounds like it's an active ability, which is the first one I think to have, at least the ones of the ones I've reviewed, this is the first one to have an actual active ability that you're going to have to click. Um, and it is a channeled spell. I guess Warrior 1 Colossus has a channeled ability as well. So it joins the nature on that. Um, Healing and damage increased by 6% per enemy, stacking up to 5 times for 30%. You may move in channeling, but other healing or damaging spells cancel the effect. So it is a channel that you're going to be doing. Um, so it's a 4 second channel. I don't know if I like the idea of a channel going into a spec that already has a weird flow with Windwalker. Um, for Mistweaver, because you can move while channeling, it's basically just replacing Essence Font because they did announce that Essence Font is being removed um, from the tree. I don't know if that's going to be in Dragonflight, but I think it'll be a War Within thing. So death to you, Caster and Windstreavers. Come join us in the melee ranks and actually use Rising Sun Kick for fuck's sake. Um, so for Mistweaver, it's going to be very interesting because like, can you use Roll? Can you Tiger's Lust yourself while you're channeling this? If that's things that you can do, then I think this becomes really interesting. If even casting non-damaging or healing spells like Roll or Tiger's Lust or hitting a defensive uh, cancels out the effect, then I think this is going to be not as good as we hope. Let's go down the left side and look at our first choice node, Temple Training. So for Mist Reaver, you get Enveloping Mist and Vivify healing increased. For Windwalker, it's Fist of Fury and Spinning Crank Kick more edge. We love ourselves some typos in these. Um, fine. Like 10% more on your main spells that you use. Enveloping Mist, you don't use a ton. I think that's a little bit weird. Um, but maybe they're going to do something with the kit to incentivize more Enveloping Mist. Because right now you don't really use it outside of GG Windows uh, or Soothing Mist channels for your Clouded Focus builds. Like I'm not hard casting Enveloping Mist unless I hit it by accident. I'm just, at that point, I've hit the button, I might as well let it go. Um, just a Fury Spinning Crane Kick, obviously cleave, AoE type stuff, so some real value there. Um, single target, Fist of Fury does see play in single target with Power Strikes. It's the name of the talent where you get the, the buff up to 10 times and it makes the damage do bigger. Spinning Crane Kick you only use in single target on Dance of TG proc, so again, it kind of incentivizes that talent. 
potentially being played here. But either way, interesting. Uh, well, honestly, it's interesting. It's boring. Uh, I don't think it's a good node, but it's fine. It's meh. And then Juin's Guidance. Teachings of the Monastery has a 15% chance to refund a charge when consumed, and the damage of Tiger Palm is increased by 30%. Huh. So Teachings of the Monastery, for those of you that are not aware, is a buff that both Windwalker and Mistweaver get, where when you uh, Tiger Palm, you gain a stack on your Blackout Kick, where your next Blackout Kick will hit a number of times equal to the charge, and you get up to three charges. So you can hit three, you know, get up to three blackout kicks uh, in a single one. Now, for Windwalker, like with blackout reinforcement, it only affects the first hit, not all three. So you definitely didn't get that breaking the game methodology damage thing that I kind of hoped you did. Um, you know, but teaching to the monastery is a good damage boost for both specs, and so this. Giving a chance to automatically refund a charge to where you can blackout kick for Mist River. I think you can blackout kick. Say so you get a three or a four stack, really, because for Mist River it's four stack now. With Jade Pyre Stomp. Um, giving two charges. So you get four, then you can get back to one immediately. Then you can Tiger Palm again, go into three, blackout kick, you know, and kind of play that game, so to speak. Windwalker, there's going to be a little less incentive to constantly use your refunded charges just because of the way your mastery works. Um, and it kind of depends on tier set, what the tier set does. Because, like, right now, Blackout Kick is your highest, one of your highest priority spenders when you have Blackout Reinforcement. But with that tier set going away, Blackout Kick is going to drop down the rotation. So you're probably going to get a little bit of extra value out of this, but not as much as maybe you would think. 30% damage on Tiger Palm is kind of whatever. Like, Tiger Palm isn't used really for its damage. It's used to, like, enhance other aspects of the kit. So for Mist Weaver, it's to enhance your Blackout Kick uh, with the Teachings of the Monastery stack so that when you have your Ancient Teachings of the Monastery talent going with your damage to healing conversion, you're getting more healing out of the Blackout Kick because it does impact that. For uh, Windwalker, it's your, it's your main Chi Builder. So, like... You don't really care about the damage that it does. You care about the resources that it gives you. So doing it doing more damage is like a, a very safe way to do a damage boost without risking making a certain ability overpowered. I think it's fine. Heart of the Jade Serpent. So for Mistweaver, consuming eight stacks of Shilun's Gifts causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown time of renewing Mist, Rise, and Psychic Life, Cocoon, and Thunder Focus T by 100% for eight seconds. Interesting. So Sheelan's Gift can stack to 10, so maybe they're adjusting it so it only max stacks to 8. Like, I mean, I usually only cast it at 10 stacks, but if I can cast it at 8 and get this type of benefit, then that'll be really good. Um, you're going to get the biggest boon. And the other thing that I have is this is this while your Celestial is out? Like, does Yulon have to be out for this to happen, or does it just happen? Because if it just happens, then this is actually a really powerful talent for Mystery of my in my opinion. Because getting another, like, a quicker cooldown on Renewing Mist and Rising Sun Kick in particular, those are the two that really stand out to me. They're going to be quite nice. Thunder Focus T, there is some secret infusion tech and things like that that you can play with. We're getting a reduced cooldown um, is going to be good there, but not anything that is, like, big. And Life Cocoon, I mean, anytime you can get more Life Cocoons, it's not a bad thing. That's just, like, a safe, good pick. Um, it does it, like, if Life Cocoon's on cooldown and then you consume the eight stacks of Sheelan's Gift, do you get the like quicker cooldown for eight seconds, that eight seconds to where instead of it being like a 45 second cooldown uh, for that eight seconds, you reduce it by 16 seconds versus eight to where all of a sudden in, in reality, you only have a what, like 25 second cooldown. on like, That'd be very interesting. For Windwalker, consuming 30 Chi causes Yulon to decrease the cooldown time of your Rising Sun Kick, Fist of Fury, Strike of the Windlord, and Whirling Dragon Punch. So again, I have the same question. If those abilities are on cooldown, when you get your 30 Chi proc, does it automatically, like, dynamically update? If it does, I think, again, this is great. Whirling Dragon Punch is interesting. I think Blizzard is trying to push us back into using the ability again. Um... Right now, there's still a lot of fundamental problems with it. Don't animation lock us, Blizzard. Let us move around with it. Like you do spin and grain kick. Uh, and it just needs to do more damage. But if you can have it up more often... Well, even then, like having it up more often is kind of reliant on you having Rising Sun Kick and Fist of Fury on cooldown. So unless you're changing, changing its trigger condition, this 
may not be really all that good for Whirling Dragon Punch. Good for the rest. Strike of the Windlord being off cooldown more often is always good because it's a very powerful ability. I love Strike of the Windlord personally. Nizalish Protection. Fort Brew. Grants an absorbed shield for 25% of your maximum health. Pretty good. I think it's better for when you know big hits are coming. So that's that's pretty solid. I think it's probably good for raid encounters. Mythic Plus kind of depends on things. Like if you're getting targeted by Feed the Weak uh, in Darkheart Thicket, for example, the last boss. Be good there because that's consistent damage on you for a few seconds. Uh, Mythic Plus overall. We'll see. Jade Sanctuary. You heal for 10% of your maximum health instantly when you activate Celestial Conduit and receive 15% less damage for the duration. So this is your main ability here. Um, probably okay. Like, that's actually pretty good. I think you probably just take Jade Sanctuary, especially if Celestial Conduit is worth it to use as a damage or healing. I, like, the way that I read Celestial Conduit is you can, like, pick the boss, channel it, and you're going to do the damage onto the enemies and then also do the healing at the same time. So it's off healing for the Windwalker Monk, which is pretty good because they don't really have anything like that. Puts them in the A tier with like the other good off healers, which is its own problem that I don't agree with, but this is the direction we're seemingly going. So uh, I think there's a good note. I think both of these have some really nice value defensively for them. Courage of the White Tiger. So for Mistweaver, Tiger Palm has a 15% chance to cause Juen to claw your target for physical damage, healing a nearby ally for 200% of the damage done. So it's just another way to get an ancient teaching style heal. Uh, that one, Ancient Teachings, procs off with Spinning Crane Kick, Blackout Kick, and Rising Sun Kick. This now gives you a chance to get a little bit of uh, healing off of Tiger Palm. Very RNG. Um, and then the chance is increased while your Celestial is active. I need to know what that increased chance goes to. Does it double to 30%? In which case, Red Crane looking, Crack Birds looking uh, very powerful. For Windwalker, Tiger Palm has a 15 chance to claw your target, healing a nearby ally for 100% of the damage done. Uh, chances increase when Book Juen is up. I think this is fine. This is a nice little 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 bit of off healing, which is something that Monk doesn't really do for DPS. Like almost every other hybrid spec has a decent way to deal damage, whether it's through Ancestral Guidance, Vampiric Embrace, Nature's Vigil, Health Stones. Windwalker was kind of like a, the only quote unquote hybrid spec that didn't really have a way to do any sort of off healing to its targets other than its buffs uh, through what generous poor and the avoidance one which is the name escapes me right now so i think it's fine again i don't agree with this direction i don't think we need dps specs doing a bunch of off healing um because i think it hurts healing design but this is the direction they're going in so it is what it is strength of the black ox after juin assists you your next enveloping miscast time is reduced by 50 percent and causes nizhao to grant an absorb shield to five nearby allies for five percent of your maximum health it's not a big shield, although depending on what our health numbers look like, I mean, 5% of 1 million is still 50,000. That's not a bad little absorb, and that's across five people, so you're getting 250,000 healing done because it's absorbed, um, and you get a reduced enveloping mist cast time, so that makes enveloping mist a little bit more worth to hard cast. Um, and I'm curious to see if this procs during, like, three stack of TG that'll be an interesting overlap but we'll see um and then for juen you get damage basically because it makes nizhao stomp at your target location dealing damage to nearby enemies and the damage reduced beyond five targets that's pretty good uh i think this is a pretty decent node um they're really kind of playing into there was a tour gas build that no one really used except for fun because uh there was a the healing the vivify talent was so powerful that you just went in and vivified everything um, but there was a build that allowed you to have all of the Celestials. Like, if you were a Windwalker, you'd go and summon Juan, you'd also summon Nizhao, Yulon, and Dave, Anger Dave, uh, and Crackbird. So you get all four Celestials out at the same time. It was very fun. It was extremely good solo build if you pulled big and then popped all your stuff, because, like, it was, just, it was great. Um, it wasn't as good as uh, Vivify killing everything for you almost instantly, but... There, I'm getting that vibe from it, and I really like that Torgas build. Uh, it was the one thing about Torgas that I enjoyed. Um, so I'm getting that vibe from it. So I think this is a good talent. I, just, I got not much to say about it. But this logo is really cool. GG Swiftness. Movement speed is increased by 20% during Celestial Conduit for 3 seconds after being assisted by any Celestial. So, making speedy boys. I actually don't mind this. 
I don't mind this at all. And they're really making Celestial Conduit trying to put as much quality of life into it inside the hero talent tree, which I think is interesting. Uh, but again, we'll have to see what the damage numbers on it are. All right, we're getting another choice node here. Let me scroll down just a little bit so we can see it better. Restore balance. Gain refreshing Jade Wind while Chi the Red Crane or Yulan the Jade Serpent is active. And then you get rushing Jade Wind while Yuen is active. Interesting. Now, refreshing and rushing Jade Wind for these two specs, you don't really ever use them. Um, there was an, a time in Shadowlands where you did uh, use refreshing Jade Wind, but it was not. It was a very niche build. Um, and rushing Jade Wind for Windwalker, you don't ever use it because it costs a Chi and. There was a chi economy problem, and there still kind of is in a way. So getting these passively while your Celestials are out is just another good way to add some passive healing and damage. So, fine. Yulon's Knowledge. Refreshing Jade Wind's duration is increased by 10%. Or by 10 seconds, that's big. Or Rushing Jade Wind's duration is increased by 4 seconds and multiple uses may overlap. Interesting. I think you're probably taking Restore Balance because managing Refreshing and Rushing Jade Wind I think is not something that a lot of players look forward to doing. But if you're getting it passively while you have your Celestial out basically every minute is uh, not bad. So I think Restore Balance is good. Yulon's Knowledge I don't think is good. Light of the Red Crane. Rushing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause GG to quickly rush to targets, healing each target. Yeah, okay. That sounds about right. That's good passive healing. Pushing into picking Rushing and Refreshing Jade Wind, which I don't know if I like this or not. Again, it doesn't really feel like it's there. Uh, and then Rushing Jade Wind and Spinning Crane Kick have a chance to cause GG dealing physical damage to every target. So you're going to get... This is going to mostly more rely on Spinning Crane Kick than it does on the Jade Winds. Because again, I don't think you really want to take... Like actively use a talent point to take the Jade Winds unless they're going to do something to make those talents really easy to get um but spinning crank kick giving you a chance to get a little bit of extra healing or damage is fine um i hate that there's not really doing much like for the mistweaver i hope it would like do a little bit of both i think it'd be cool i think it'd be cool for both to get a little bit of both but we'll see it's a fine node inner compass you switch between alignments after an august celestial assist you increasing a correspondent secondary stat crane stance interesting if there's if this is a rotational then and makes it predictable then i think it's really interesting three percent is kind of minor so i don't know if this is actually good but i like the idea numbers tuning can be numbers can be tuned but i like the idea of this and like you know you're getting this with like you know here's a celestial helping you here's a celestial helping you here's a celestial helping you um Here's the Celestial helping you. So this, in theory, does proc quite a bit. Um, but the question is, is, how do we determine what's next? If it rotates like the Blessing of Seasons for Paladin, does, Holy Paladin does, where you know, like, hey, we're going to get Crane Stance and then Tiger, then Ox and Serpent. But I think this is probably okay. Uh, if it's random, then it could get gross. August Dynasty, casting Jade Fire Stomp increases the damage of your next Rising Sun Kick by 30%, or the healing of your next Vivify by 50% for Mistweaver. Um, sure. I think it's a good single target. Because Rising Sun Kick usually only hits one target. Uh, now, Vivify extra on the Vivify is interesting because you, if it affects the cleave on the Vivify, then we're talking. Um, I think Inner Compass is probably better, but August Dynasty sounds pretty good. All right, the capstone, Unity Within. Celestial Conduit can be reset, recast once during its duration to call upon all of the Celestials to assist you at 200% effectiveness. Unity Within is automatically cast when Celestial Conduit ends if not used before expiration. Oh, so you get to have some control over this, but you're going to get it either way. Huh, interesting. Okay. Um... I, I don't know what to make of this tree. From a Windwalker perspective, there's a little bit of off healing. There's a little there's a bunch of little passive damage nodes. You're playing around with the spirits of all the Celestials and Nijao and Chiji and Yulon and, and Juen, uh, which I think is cool. I like that thematically. I think it's a pretty neat theme. Um, I don't know if I like how they empower everything. And Celestial Conduit is going to be interesting because it's a four second channel. And that really is going to hurt the flow. Uh, like, you're going to have to use this when you have 
like zero energy. Otherwise, you're just going to overcap energy uh, and you're not using any of your cheese spenders for that. So it's got to be worth casting for us to be able to consider taking it. It's got to do as much damage as a Rising Sun Kick or Strike of the Wind Lords does, um, even on a single target. Like, that's the big thing. Like, I'm a little concerned about it. Um, I think this is one that you probably should, we need to experiment with when Alpha releases and players can get their hands on it. Um, but overall, I think that I'm, I'm going to say six, six and a half ish. I'm confused about how some things work, and I want to get some insights from the developers on it if I can. Um, so if you're a developer watching this, hit me up. Um, let's talk about, well, both of these trees, but I'd love to talk about the monk trees with you guys and kind of get an idea of what's going on with them. So, um, so overall, I'm curious about this. I really like the theme of it. I like the flavor that it brings. A little concerned about the mechanics of some of these abilities. Celestial Conduit being a channel is also very concerning from a Windwalker perspective. Don't know if I like it. Um, but I think it's one of those things that I probably need to play it to really be able to give true legitimate feedback. So, um, anyways, guys, that's the end of this one. It's probably the longest one to date. So until the next video, I hope you're all staying safe. Hope you're enjoying yourself. You're having fun. You keep on gaming and I'll see you in the next video.